Today I'm going to show you how to create this procedural mountain landscape. It's kind of a bit of clay in there too. I was going for something that you might see in the background of like a Star Wars episode or something. And once again, I just want to thank everyone who has supported me by uh, buying one of my Gumroad products. It really means a lot, so thanks. And this is what the end node setup will be. To set up our scene, let's get rid of the cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the entire middle area to my shader editor and hit N to get rid of that shop on the right. Change that material so that uh, the material that was on our cube is now on our plane. And I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport. And just size it up a little bit so we can see it a bit better. Hold down Z and move your mouse up to go into rendered mode. Let's go down to the uh, render properties here and change it to cycles and experimental. And if you have a GPU, go ahead and select that as well. Come down to the modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface modifier. Check adaptive subdivision, click simple, and then under levels viewport, change that to six. Then come down here to the material properties. We're gonna scroll down to where it says settings and uh, where it says displacement, just change that to displacement only. And now we're all set up for some displacement. I'm gonna zoom out and just click on my light. Move that guy. I'm going to bring in some HDRI lighting. So just under World Properties right here, uh, next to Color, click that yellow circle and click on Environment Texture, then click Open. Then you just need to find where you've got your HDRIs. And if you don't have any, check out hdrihaven.com. Uh, it's a website where you can get a bunch of free ones. Uh, Lakeside 2K is what I'm going to be using, so I'm going to click that in, and now we can see it's loaded in. I'm going to come up to the top left where it says Object and change that to World. And this will allow us to adjust our HDRI. If I click on Lakeside 2K and hit Control T, that's a Node Wrangler shortcut, we can adjust our HDRI a little bit. I'm going to bring it down a little bit because the horizon line is kind of high. So I'm just going to bring it down to uh, not, not that high, maybe 0 0.02, just very slightly. Uh, you can do whatever you want, but I uh, found this works pretty well for me. Let's come over here to the top left and click on Object, then click on our plane. We can see that texture again. One last thing I'm going to set up is under the render properties, just come down here. That is render properties, right? Yeah, okay, good. Just come down to subdivision and change this dicing rate render to four. I found it still looked pretty good at this rate here, and it took way less time to render. So if you want way more detail, just lower this number. But you know, if you want to save time in your renders, make that a little higher. So let's start working on our texture. I'm just going to move this principal BSDF out of the way here and bring in a Voronoi. Just place it here and hit Control T and make sure object is going into vector there. Then bring in a displacement node, place it here, and run color into scale and displacement into displacement. We can see a bunch of kind of flat tops of varying heights. What's going on here is we're looking at the color output, which is a variety of different colors there. But when we convert that to black and white, which is what's happening when it's going into here, uh, this is what it looks like. And it just creates varying heights of those flat tops there. So what we can do actually is change the kind of the steepness right here by changing this to smooth F1. Then we have this smoothness controller where we can basically make it kind of steep, but not you know quite as steep. So I'm going to actually change this to 0.2, and so we can see it's this steep slope, but not you know 90 degrees, not straight up and down. And then what I'm going to do is plug distance into the height here. So now you have these two different things interacting with each other. I'm going to set this mid-level at zero. And why don't we lessen off the effect of one of these just using a math note here. I'm going to plug it onto the color one there and change this to multiply. Then we can change this around. I'm going to put it at 0.7 so I had it at the end there. Then let's add some noise up here to add some variation. So I'm going to bring in two noises here, at least initially and change this first one, uh, I'll leave it as is actually. This uh, this second one here, we'll change this to 100. We'll change the detail to six. So I'm gonna need to bring in some mix RGBs here, otherwise this is way too strong. So let's bring in two mix RGBs and just put them right after each noise texture there. And then plug object into color two of that first one. And then this color output of that first one into color two of the second one. This first mix right here, let's change this to 0.99. And then this second mix, let's change this to 0.8. So already these are looking a little bit better, a little bit more like mountains. And let's do one more thing where we kind of mask out some area. 
that this first noise affects here. And so what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this noise with Control Shift D, uh, so it kind of stays attached to that texture coordinate node. Change the scale to 15, and I'll just change the detail back to 2, because we don't really need any detail in this one here. I'm going to bring in a color ramp, place it right after here. So let's just put it on the factor there. And then this first one, we're going to change this to a 0.45 gray and set this at 0.36. The second one, we'll set this at uh, a 0.65 gray and change the position of this guy to 0.54. Then I'm going to bring in another mix RGB here. Uh, I'll just place it here for a second because I need to just make a little incision there. And let's place this on this line here, where it's just going into color one. And then this one is going to go into the factor there. So we can see the effect is a little bit strong. Let's look at the principled effect, or the principled shader effect there again. Um, what I'm going to do is just put a math out right here to lessen the effect coming from that mask. And uh, just change that to multiply. Just change this to 0.1. That's looking pretty good. It's looking more like a mountain range already. So the next thing I wanted to do is just have the mountains kind of in the center here and not everywhere so that there was kind of a focal point there. So uh, to do that, I just brought in a vector math node. I'm just going to run object into the top here and change this to length. And if we look at this, it's essentially just a circular gradient there. I'm going to bring in a color ramp to place right after here. And let's set this bottom one to white. So I'm just going to bring white all the way to the bottom. And this top one, we'll set it 0.75. We'll just change this color by going into this value area here and setting it to a 0.25 gray. So we can see this is our gradient right here. Now, now what we're going to do uh, is mix this with this four and I output right here, the, the distance one. So I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here. Let's plug this into the bottom. Plug the distance into the top one. Change this to multiply change it to 1, and then we'll plug this into the height there. And now we can see we've just got these mountains in the middle. So the reason I uh, left this at gray in this color ramp here is because I wanted the edges not to be totally flat. If I wanted them flat, I could change this to black. And you can see, you know, it's much better now. And one thing, actually, maybe we should change, too, is the interpolation right here. So I'm just going to change that to back to gray. You can see how there's this kind of circle right here. It's not very noticeable, but once you notice it, it is, you know, kind of there. So if you change this to ease, it would fix that. It looks a lot better. This is what our mountains look like so far. I'm pretty happy, but uh, if you wanted to change these parameters around, you know, feel free and do that until you're happy with the result you get. One last thing I'm going to do, too, is put in a combine XYZ node and just feed it into this location on the mapping node. I found that it actually worked a little bit better than putting a vector map node here. Uh, when you change it too much, it tends to go kind of haywire and uh, these noises kind of get messed up for whatever reason. So this works a little bit better. If you want to just use this as a seed value, you can change this around and get a whole bunch of different uh, you know results there. I'm going to modify one thing. Down here in the material properties where I've got this displacement only setting, I'm going to change this to displacement and bump. I found this worked actually a lot better. I got better detail and I didn't have to increase the dicing rate or, or anything like that to get some nice bump there. So let's start working on this first material here. And I'm going to duplicate this uh, twice here to actually create three principled BSDFs and just start working on this first one. I'm going to start by bringing in two noise textures. And this bottom one, we'll change the scale of this guy to actually to 200, not to 100. And this top one, we'll change the scale of that one to 40. Let's mix these together and open up this mix. And I did that by holding down Control Shift and right clicking from one noise texture, dragging to the other. And I'll just change this mix to 0 0.6. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to feed it into a color ramp here and change this black position to 0.17 and this white position will change to 0.86. Then I'm going to control shift D this color ramp so that it's still attached to my mix RGB. I'm going to create another color ramp. Just place it right here. 
and we're going to run this into the base color. Let's just see what this looks like. It looks a little bit uh, shiny in some areas. So I'm just going to create um, just a, a little extra noodle here and feed this into the roughness. Then I'm going to change this to multiply and change this value to something a little higher so we get a little bit of a rougher surface there. Just set that to 3. So that's feeding into the roughness there. I'm going to create a bump node as well. And just place it at the bottom here. Run the color into the height. Change the strength to 0 0.2. Then we'll feed this into the normal right here. For this color ramp right here, we're going to be doing something slightly different. And uh, so to start out, I'm going to go to the top left, and split my screen, change this to my image editor. Then I've got this folder with this little picture of Rundle, uh, which I, I believe is just limestone. Let's move that back over here. And then if I hover over this color ramp, right over this section here and hit E, this eyedropper appears, and I can drag this across my image, and it kind of fills in the color ramp for me. So, you know, feel free to do that a couple times. You'll get pretty different results each time, depending on where you are there. You know, you get some black in there too if you want. That doesn't really matter. Whatever. That looks pretty good. I'm going to move on from here and just close this up for now. This next uh, material here, this principal BSDF that I duplicated first, I'm just going to change that base color to black and the roughness. I'll just drag that up to one. Let's mix these together. We've got our mix shader right here. We just need to create a mask to mix those two together. So this next part just came about from trying things. And, you know, maybe this is something you're not really supposed to do. But I was just looking at this output from the displacement, just kind of looking at, uh, you know, the as if it's a shader. And then I put a separate XYZ node on that guy. And, you know, it actually looks kind of cool if you look at the Z output. It looks quite detailed in some areas. So I thought, why don't I use that to mix this mix shader here? And it didn't increase the render time by too much. So I thought as long as it works, you know, it works. So I'm going to plug this into the factor here and see that output. And let's just go back into my camera mode there. And we can see it's got kind of an interesting raw texture now, you know, with that black mixed in with that gray there. To brighten this up, I'm just going to change the color ramp a little bit. I'm going to bring the white slider down. You can see it kind of lightens up in some areas when I do that. And I'm just going to set this at 0.3. So let's render this out and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks good. I'm happy with this. Let's make this ground a little bit bigger. You can see that, you know, if you just, you know, click on this and size by two, it sizes the whole thing up. But uh, if you tap into edit mode and then hit S and two, then it sizes everything up, but it keeps the circle the same size in the middle, like this uh, thing coming from our vector math node here. So it just uh, keeps them out in the same size in the middle. That's kind of what you want to do. Now you can get some nice low shots if you want of that ground there and you don't clip through the map as easily. So let's create our third texture here. I'm actually going to just drag a bunch of this stuff up here. Let's just duplicate everything before that principled BSDF there. We'll reset. Actually, we'll take this one off. We don't even, whoops. We don't really need this one. And uh, this multiply, we're not going to use that either. So let's just plug this into the normal here. And we'll change this noise texture to 50. And this one, we'll decrease that to 5. And uh, we're going to plug this into the base color. But we're going to do the same thing we did for that other texture, where we open up this window here and uh, select the image editor. And then let's go ahead and uh, I've got this texture prepared here. It's actually uh, a wood texture, like, uh, you know, what's it called? Particle board. And I'm just going to drag this across from this color ramp right here. Hit E over that section. Let's just drag this across. Let's see what this looks like in real time while we're adjusting it. Let's try one more time. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now let's mix these two together. And uh, we're going to have to create another mask to mix these two shaders. Let's close this up here. And we're going to bring in something called a Fresnel node. A Fresnel node is something that uh, basically, if you're looking at a higher angle, it's lighter. So this ground here. And if you're looking straight on, it's darker, like this background stuff here. So then we're just going to bring in a color ramp. 
and just place it right after there. And let's set the black at 0.21 and the white we're going to bring down to 0.45. So a much more contrasted image. Let's plug this in. I can already see what's going to happen though. We're going to need to switch these around. You can see the uh, rock is on the ground. So let's just switch these around here. Now you have the rock up there and the mud on the ground and up there. So one of the downsides to using that Fresnel node is that when you change your angle of view, the materials change as well. So that mud is going to be kind of uh, different depending on how you're looking at this object. So let's look at some of the ways you might change this around. Uh, for instance, if you wanted the line on the ridges to be a little different, let's say a little thinner, you might turn this down here and you get kind of a different looking um, edge there. Or you could turn it up and you get much more hilly stuff. Maybe crank this up here as well or add this, uh, you know, multiply to this branch as well to kind of have a dual uh, control there. This is the last one all rendered out. So I really like the look of this one as well. We could also come over to the Voronoi texture and change the scale to something like six. We have a lot more mountains now. Uh, that looks really cool. Let's see what that looks like rendered out. Yeah, it looks really cool. Uh, I like the look of this one too. Here's another one I rendered out just by tweaking the parameters slightly. Play around with it, have fun, and uh, ask me any questions you have in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching.